The best value in gaming history, Xbox Game Pass is seeming to get steam and is taking motion as a train that cannot be stopped. Developers are starting to share their views and opinions over the success of the subscription service. What's going on everybody, it's LegionofGamer.com, Centurion1307 and we're diving into this right now. Let's get one thing straight. The value that is packed into Game Pass is amazing. It is probably one of the most pro-consumer services that I can name off the top of my head today. They have sweetened that deal even further by creating Game Pass Ultimate. There is now two Game Pass libraries for you to choose from, one on console and one on PC, and by having Game Pass Ultimate, you get access to both of them. Not to mention Xbox Live is also wrapped into Game Pass Ultimate, so you get all three services for $14.99 a month. And if you haven't heard yet, at the time of this video, there's actually a really awesome deal to sign up for Game Pass Ultimate right now. Now this deal is only good for a few more days past this video, but if you sign up right now for $1, they will convert your remaining Game Pass months and Xbox Live months into Game Pass Ultimate months. So even if you didn't have Game Pass, but you had a year of Xbox Live Gold, for $1 it would be converted into a year of Game Pass Ultimate. This means that any time you will have access to multiple titles ranging anywhere from an indie development all the way up to a AAA title. They have even thrown in that you will get day and date first party titles the day they come out. And with Game Pass Ultimate, you get access to the Ultimate versions of those titles as well. So that $80 Gears of War 5 Ultimate Edition that you were thinking about getting, you get that with Game Pass Ultimate. Yes, I am one of those totally excited that they are putting in the Ultimate versions of these games and the first party studio games day and day into the service. If it wasn't for them doing this, I would be having to pick and choose which titles I could afford as I have had to put out a large amount of money recently in my personal life. But the inclusion of these first party titles and their Ultimate Editions in the Ultimate service has actually started a conversation. This conversation is starting to revolve around the idea is Game Pass actually starting to devalue games and hurt developers. The first article in this discussion actually came out in January of last year. It was written by James Batchelor of GameIndustry.biz and in the title it reads, For the consumer, Xbox Game Pass is fantastic. For retail, it just kills us outright. The description of this article, and I quote, Independent game stores debate the impact of Microsoft's decision to add new first party releases to its subscription service. Now to make this absolutely clear, this is geared towards smaller independent game retailers and not the big chain superstores that have other products that they can fall back on to drive profits. In this article, it talks about how some small independent retailers in video games are actually unhappy with the decision to include first party studio titles and as a result stopped carrying Microsoft's first party studio titles on their shelves as a result of this subscription service. Now I must point out that this article is based in the UK and all the businesses that they interviewed are also in the UK as well but I'm quite sure that there is also some smaller independent retailers here in the US that are following this trend as well. But not just the independent ones, I've noticed a certain big chain retailer that seems to be losing a lot of money lately following this trend as well. Let's face it, I hate mentioning names, but it must be pointed out that GameStop isn't doing too well right now. I just went in there today to look at their sale, and one thing I did notice that almost any title that is included in Game Pass is actually missing from inside the store. Yes, you can find a couple of them here and there, but it's not like another title that's not included in the service that they have multiple copies of. A representative in the article from the UK-based Extreme Games quoted in saying, Essentially, it's made our Xbox business worthless overnight. Why should we support them if we're going to get very little out of it? Retailers are already saying that it's difficult already to convince somebody that a game is worth $60 and the subscription service is making it even harder. Fast forward to a couple days ago of July of 2019 and developers are starting to chime in now as well. 
No, it's not first party studios chiming in, it's third party developers and indie developers that are starting to have a word in this subscription service that is taking the world by storm. Eurogamer released an article on July 5th titled, what developers think of Game Pass. Choose your development partner as carefully as you choose your love partner. This article revolves around the panel discussion that took place at Game Lab that was hosted by GamesIndustry.biz editor-in-chief Matt Hanron. The others involved in this discussion were developers that were behind Crusader Kings, Rhyme, Cube, and Inside with their thoughts on Game Pass in particular. One developer was quoted in saying, consumers want as many games as possible, as free as possible, and you can't get anything for free. So you need to find the right price, but that's the angle. He was also further quoted in saying, all the other times I've been suggested subscription, it's never worked out. Because they don't know what developers need, and in the end, it is developers putting out a game for free. But finished off their statement with saying, with Game Pass, they're doing it correctly for the developers. But another developer that was part of the panel discussion advised everybody there to have caution when it comes to subscription services. None of the publishers or developers involved with Game Pass are allowed to discuss how they receive compensation for their titles being in Game Pass. In some services, it's based on how many times your product is downloaded. In other services, it's based on the value of your product. And in other services, it's based on how many hours your product is used or played. He was referring to Game Pass as a gold rush in the gaming industry. Right now in the gaming industry, if you can't make money you never will he points out that game pass is appealing to smaller developing companies that need to get money right now but in exchange for getting money right now that doesn't really give them much of a longevity he says developers need to think long term what happens if they cut people off from being able to put their content into game pass and then he adds what about games that he feels like the ones that he develops that are worth more than the average single player because people play them for thousands of hours versus a couple hours he insinuates that game pass and the gold rush that is creating is going to be a one-time event in gaming history. Other developers argued that Game Pass is actually breaking down the barrier for other developers to finally get their product on console. One of the editors for GamesIndustry.biz came out and argued the fact that developers do not have the metrics that are needed to gauge how well their game is going to do on Game Pass. But to make a counterpoint argument to that statement right now, back on March 29th on Twinfinite.net, Larry Herb was quoted in insane when asked by a fan about the monetary compensation with Game Pass. I will just say that there's a lot of work that Microsoft has done with our store to enable a lot of great information and a lot of great ways to understand how people are using their game. There is a lot of work that we have done on the back end and look, I worked at Microsoft for almost 20 years and this company understands data like nobody. So it looks like Game Pass is creating a dividing line in the industry. On one side of the line you have developers that are saying that Game Pass is a fair option and also a gateway into the console market. Not to mention the amount of value that it gives to the consumer. On the flip side though, there is those that advise caution when it comes to developers and their long-term goals. There are some developers that do believe at one point in time Microsoft will cut off developers from being able to put content on their service. And there are those that also believe that this service will affect retailers and the value of games going forward. With the imminent release of Gears 5 in September and Halo Infinite in the holiday season of 2020, retailers are already bracing for little to no turnout for games that would normally have major release parties and a huge turnout for all the fans. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Do you think people are overreacting or do you think that their fears are justified? We also can't forget that there is places still in this world that don't have very much of an internet infrastructure to actually power a service like Game Pass. And there's also that argument to be made that some of these titles are absolutely awesome and they are franchises that you gotta try. But to take them from a $60 title to a $10 a month title is that 
considered devaluation of the franchise. I absolutely love the intricacies and the ins and outs of business. I understand that you want to maintain the value of a product's franchise, but at the same time, I like to save money. So I am conflicted. Do I care about a product's value while I save money, or do I care about the fact that this could potentially devalue a very important brand? I would like to thank you for tuning in today and joining me in this discussion. I am going to say that this is going to be up for serious debate going forward over the next couple years. So once again, my friends, thank you for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, game hard out there, everybody.